So I think one of the really interesting results from ADPD were the results of the donanumab clinical trial. And these were, of course, highly anticipated based on the earlier results from Lilly's solanuzumab trials a few years ago. And then, of course, with Biogen's aducanumab being um, under consideration right now at the FDA. So looking at those results, what we see is that we, we did a meta-analysis of some of the results from solanuzumab across the expedition studies and then aducanumab, and we're seeing consistent treatment benefit across both of these treatments. And it looks like the effect sizes are maybe between 15 and 25% slowing on some of the outcomes, and a few of them are getting as high as into the 30% slowing range. And so donanumab, I think, was anticipated as something that could potentially improve on those treatment benefits and show us something that was even stronger. And the phase two study, although it was not terribly large, was able to show statistically significant treatment benefit. And the IARDS is kind of new, and, and I think people are excited and interested in what that is. And essentially, it's doing the same type of thing as we were doing with ADCOMS, which is trying to combine function and cognition into one endpoint to really get at what is happening with the disease progression over time. And combining across cognition and function allows you to talk about the total benefit across the whole disease. So it gives you better sensitivity to progression over time, um, but it also gives you something that should be closer to the actual disease progression so that you can see whether you're improving the disease as a whole. So the IARDS is something that does the same type of thing as ADCOMS. And if I were talking about all of these approaches generally, there's the approach of doing um, a composite score, which is ADCOMS and IARDS. ADRS. And then also we could do a global statistical test where you just combine total scores into one overall assessment. And then you could do a Bayesian hierarchical analysis, which can also combine overall uh, test statistics into one overall score. And all of these are trying to answer the question of, are we changing the progression of Alzheimer's disease as a whole? So I think it's very encouraging that they saw treatment effects on this scale. And I think the fact that the next clinical trial is using the CDR sum of boxes as a primary outcome, the CDR sum of boxes is not as well aligned with disease progression. And so it it will it's likely to correlate with what we're seeing in the IADRS, but it's also likely to be less sensitive. But the larger sample size should take care of that. And it's correlated enough that if you're having a treatment benefit on overall disease, you should be able to see it on the CDR sum of boxes as well. But the advantage really of some of these composites and also the global statistical tests and the Bayesian hierarchical analysis is that you're able to combine a Across not just cognition, but also function and potentially even some of the biomarkers like hippocampal volume. And by combining across all of these, you're answering the question of whether you have an impact on the overall disease and not just specific symptoms. And so in my mind, the, the composite scores and the global statistical tests are the closest thing you get to being able to measure the true underlying disease. So I think it's very positive and I'm very excited about those results. And I think we're going to be able to see some good um, amyloid targeted agents and specifically uh, monoclonal antibodies that are potentially active in this uh, disease and something that could uh, see positive results in a phase three soon and hopefully, you know, get good treatments to patients.